Hopefully, if you've been paying attention, you're now getting quite comfortable with the idea of kinetics and some of the terminology we use, and hopefully with a bit of mathematics as well, hopefully you, you can start seeing how equations work. So if you weren't necessarily really strong with that, uh, I hope it's getting a little better. Uh, if not, we will work on it. Uh, just do send me an email or ask me and we can help break things down a little easier. Uh, so we're going to round off the second topic now, which has all been about the kinetic theory of gases. And we kind of started with the Arrhenius equation. I went through a bit about what it means for a gas to move at a particular speed and collide and sweep out areas through its collision diameter and so on. Uh, so now we're going to round that off and connect it all together. Uh, and for this, we're going to look at simple collision theory, some equations that those theories predict, and then we're going to relate this to the Arrhenius equation. So we've had the Arrhenius equation, where the rate constant is equal to our pre-exponential factor, and then the exponential of an activation energy over RT. That is a empirically derived formula. It's a nice little bit of theory about what activation energy should do where the kind of a constant that multiplies it up to get to the rate constant that we can derive experimentally. So the first topic was all about this. Our second topic has all been about trying to interpret that. And now we're going to finally put those two together. So collision theory, this goes back to that very first lecture. Collision theory just states that molecules have to collide and then a reaction occurs. So specifically, what did we say that um, must occur. Uh, well, one, a collision must occur, a collision of some kind. Uh, and the last topic or so has all been about getting the speeds of molecules so we can figure out how often do they collide. Uh, and we get this sort of formula here. Uh, so remember, this is our collision cross section. It is sort of an area. Then we have a speed. Yeah, we can get a speed out based on a few factors such as the mass and the temperature uh, and then density of the two things that are colliding so this is for a reaction of a plus b they're gonna smack into each other and react uh, so we have uh, say if they are gases two concentrations now we don't necessarily want that in terms of just what was how many collisions are there uh, we want to kind of generalize it into something that's rate so we instead of having this z a b factor term here we have Z0. So I've put this down here as Z0. This just means that this is the number of collisions that could happen uh, for any particular given concentration. Uh, so that means we can now relate it to K, the rate constant. Because remember, rate is equal to K concentration. So if we scratch out these concentrations, we can scratch out that, and we're now interested in just K. So that's simple idea so we are interested in just these two factors cross section and speed uh, that's an area and that is the mean speed of the molecules so on. the second part from collision theory there must be sufficient energy so what we need to do is how many molecules of this side so if they collide uh, do they have the right energy are they going to hit each other head on and with enough energy to get over the activation barrier or not so we have this Boltzmann factor uh, which is the number of energy, uh, the number of molecules that are higher than a particular energy. Uh, I'm not going to go into the equation of how we derive that. Uh, it's a little bit of integration, obviously. We're not going to cover it, but we need to figure out how many molecules does that part of the graph represent? I oh, will just give it to you. It's a little simpler than it seems at first sight. Uh, and then, of course, it must be the correct orientation. So this is quite important. Uh, generally speaking, if this substitution reaction wants us to collide here, it's going to go ahead. And if it collides here, it's going to bounce off. There's nothing it can do. And that might be a transient reaction, but it's not going to happen. It's Nothing's going to occur here. So these are the three factors from simple collision theory. Uh, we must have the right orientation, there must be the right energy, and there must be a collision in the first place. So what we get at the end is this equation. So I'm going to break this down a bit. Uh, right, we have this p this is the steric factor so when i said all about the orientation this factor effectively says uh what proportion of the collisions 
uh, are actually in the right orientation. Now, you might naively think, well, it's got to hit the atom on this side, so the steric factor must be 0.5%, uh, 0.5 or 50% or something like this. Um, that's not necessarily true. We have to derive these empirically. Uh, all we can do is get the rates out and try and figure it out uh, from data. Uh, later on, when you do transition state theory, you can start putting a better number on that. But until then, this is just empirical. Empirical. What can I say? I did science, not spelling. Uh, we also have this in here, the number of collisions, so this is fairly obvious. Uh, the more collisions that happen, uh, the higher the rate. So finally, the molecules with the right energy. So that is our factor. Uh, we have that Boltzmann factor here, and we divide it through by the Boltzmann constant and temperature. And it E raised to the, the whole thing. Uh, so we denote that, if you've noticed, not with just K, but K SCT or K simple collision theory. Uh, so that means we've derived this sort of semi-empirically and sort of with a bit of theory involved. So this is the main equation we're interested in. So this is what we're all here for. We figured out that our three components from just thinking about what happens when molecules combine gives us this equation at the top. And then the Arrhenius equation, something that was mostly empirically derived, that can get us K and activation energy and so on, uh, is this. Uh, and hopefully you should be able to see some similarities here. Obviously we've got K on both sides. That much should be clear. Then we've got an exponential term. Again, something should be quite clear here. Uh, and then notice they are to the minus something. Good, we're looking very similar here. And then look at these terms here, Ea over Rt at the bottom, and then our Boltzmann factor over Kbt uh, there. So the Boltzmann constant is there, the gas constant is here, so that tells us we're really working on kind of a molecule scale, molecular scale, and the gas constant basically means we're working on a molar scale. So. This one is very theory driven. It's based on what happens when two molecules collide. This one's empirically driven. We're asking what happens when we're actually measuring concentrations in terms of moles or moles per decimeter cubed and so on. Uh, of course, this looks a little bit different. We have A here. We call that a pre-exponential factor earlier. But here, above, we've actually split it into two terms. So the number of collisions, remember that's the number of collisions irrespective of concentration, because obviously the rate is related to the rate constant times the concentration, and then the steric factor. So what you can kind of see is when I said A, the pre-exponential factor, was sort of a fudge factor to get us to a rate constant from a bit of theory. The steric factor is sort of doing the same thing here. We can work out how many collisions there should be. We can know what the energy should be and so on. And we can calculate the steric factor from that. So a couple of caveats, obviously. This is sort of an approximation. They are theories, remember, the point of theories in science is to make predictions. If they make very good predictions, they're good theories. If they make terrible predictions, they are bad theories. These happen to be very good theories. They match it quite nicely, but there is a little bit of, you know, give and take between them. So A, the pre-exponential factor is slightly, very slightly temperature dependent. It's not going to be, that Arrhenius equation is not 110% perfect. Uh, so th this won't necessarily bug us uh, for our purposes because we're going to be working over kind of small temperature ranges as far as the Arrhenius equation is concerned. Uh, we're not going to be doing something at 10 degrees and a million degrees, for instance. Uh, things will definitely start falling apart that much, but when you're doing something at 10 degrees and 20 degrees and 30 degrees, it holds true enough. Uh, and steric factors are empirical. So, like I said earlier, you can't just naively assume that it must be, the steric factor must be at least 50% because this part of the molecule is blocked off and this is active, we've got to work it out. Sometimes these steric factors can actually 
imply uh, require the other molecule to orientate correctly as well like that way instead of this way or something uh, so there is a way to work those out properly it's called transition state theory and uh, transition state theory is something you get onto much later on in a chemistry course because it requires a little bit of quantum mechanics it requires a little bit of almost computational chemistry and it requires a lot more detail about ex, um, about energetics and so on uh, so you will get onto this eventually but you don't need to know it now um, let's just put it into a black box and forget about it uh, so just give you some sample values for the various things that we can get out here um, for instance we can figure out what a is according to um, our experiment and we can figure out what it should be according to the simple collision theory and activation energies and then get the steric factors so what you can see is that a as we expect they're 10 to the 6 10 to the 12 that sort of value these are about 10 to an 11 and so on the activation energies are anywhere between zero and a few hundreds um, kilojoules per mole and p here we go uh, look at the values here 0.16 so you might think 16 percent of collisions are in fact the right orientation but look at some of these ones these are really quite small that's not very intuitive you might think that that reaction there is actually comparatively simple you should think that oh most collisions should um, go ahead that's not necessarily true we have to derive this from data and things like transition state theory and looking at slightly more complex systems and we will get on to slightly more complex systems later can explain why that is uh, and some in fact are greater than one so maybe the theories are doesn't match perfectly here so obviously very simple reactions particularly first order ones uh, p seems quite intuitive um, but that's the range of values you would be expecting for these so don't so much memorize these just get familiar with them uh, take a look at the numbers what you're expecting to see you're expecting to see the tens sevens and sixes and twelves around here and so on and the hundreds for this sort of value end anywhere between one and almost zero in fact very close to zero for p uh, it's quite a wide range of things but that's where you're looking for uh, so let's just kind of review this simple collision theory says we need a collision of the right orientation and of the right energy so when we build that into an equation well the collision of the right orientation there's our steric factor of the right energy there we go the three components of our simple collision theory um, equation and the relationship to the Arrhenius equation well and say k is equal to a e minus activation energy over rt there we go you can see sort of rough equivalence here there is our boltzmann factor is very similar to the activation energy uh p0 and p uh, p0 uh, p and z0 there are the equivalent of the pre-exponential factor here uh, and again we just switch the boltzmann constant and the gas constant it just means we're dealing with either an individual molecule or the molar scale uh, so that is pretty much it for this second topic. It was reasonably quick to actually link the Arrhenius equation to this simple collision theory, but the main point of this entire topic has really been to get over kind of the point of collisions, so the scale of molecules, their complexity, their speed, and so on, because that all goes into what was eventually just one term in this equation. So. Do make sure you can revise that this is effectively just the punchline of the entire thing uh, so hopefully you'll be able to apply it and understand how the, these two relate uh, next topic is experimental methods so we're actually going to do some of this and uh, not necessarily go personally into a lab but we will get some data out we will look at how we would go about doing this in the lab what experiments can we do uh, so hopefully really practical applied chemistry will be coming up.